Hi, Corey. So I've known you since uh, 2003 uh, when when I first saw your defining Edward. Um, can you tell us about uh, tell people who don't know you uh, who you are and uh, set us up your new film for us? Mm, well, were you ready for? Champion. I'm a uh, filmmaker based in Calgary, as you know. Um, I have a background as a technician in the Alberta film industry for about 12 years. Defining Edward was my first feature film. I made a couple small short films before that. Ah, it didn't really amount to anything. And then um, after Defining Edward, I made another film, a short through Bravo Fact, which was based on a book by John Gould. Um, and the story was uh, The Perfection of the Moment. And I pitched to Bravo to do a trilogy of these these films from this book. So when you started it, it's like a trilogy already. Like you start off thinking that mm, in the back of your mind you want to uh, want it to be a trilogy. It's did a you, great book. Did you pitch it like a trilogy? Uh, or? John's a great writer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right. The book is Killed Through 55 Fictions and it was nominated for the Giller Prize in mm -hmm. 2003. Right. So um, after I finished the film, mm -hmm. Bravo liked it. Uh -huh. And I met Judy Budstone, the executive director of Bravo Fact, and I said, I really like this book. Uh -huh. And she knew of the book, and I said, you know, these take a lot of time, but I, I, I would like to help, I think, um, a, a bigger audience, or maybe a, a film audience, kind of find John's work that mm -hmm. didn't know it. Um, and I said, you know, what about doing two more? Doing, I think I've got three films in me total, you know, right. for this okay. kind of thing. So. And she said, yeah, you know, obviously we have to deal with it on a film-by-film -film basis. What you're ready for, which is the film that is playing at Calgary here in a couple of weeks, is the second chapter. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Right. In fact, it, it, uh, I've put a reservation on uh, the book now, so I'm going to check out uh, yeah, that, John's book. Yeah, it's a great book. book. So there are 55 stories in it, right, mm -hmm. if I understand correctly. And I think so how do you pick, like, the three, and uh, is it, like, set up as three contiguous story in the book already, mm -hmm. or you think it kind of worked for you as a set. Like, I haven't seen the book, so... Um, Sorry for my... Excuse I, my... No, 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 it's fine. I... The book is called uh, 55 Fictions because there's 55 stories in it. And I hadn't really heard the term before, but the term is flash fiction, or and I'm sure there's others. Um, most of the stories are between two and four pages long. I don't think there's a story over five pages long. Okay, that's that's my kind of story. Exactly. I, I love you know, like because short, I love nice, and really like clean. Yeah. And yeah. I love to read before bed. And to be honest ah. with you, my days are so busy that I often don't get much time to read during you know the day or lunch breaks or whatever. So ah. I'll read at night. You know, ah. and I'm lucky if I get some nights 15 mm. minutes of reading. Mm. So with a book like John's, you can ah. get two or three stories, you know, before you yeah, shut yeah. off the light. Right, right. Um, it's an amazing book, and I did certainly see, I think I've read the thing cover to cover probably at least three times, and then mm -hmm. read several stories over and over again. Um, but once you read it, you'll, you'll know. I think a lot of them are very filmic. They're very cinematic already, and certainly Perfection of the Moment um, was the standout in terms of this is a film already. Mm -hmm. You know, the beat, the rhythm, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's just such a compact little story with a, a beginning, a middle, an end, mm -hmm. you know. And I think short fiction is hard because you kind of got to get in and out. It's, it's similar to short film, and you have to get in and out, but you've got to have a point to what you are trying to say. Uh -huh. um, and I don't really necessarily believe in just making something purely for entertainment safe, you know? I think if you're going to pour your heart and soul and into something and, and all this time that they do take, even though they're only, you know, four or five or six minutes long, um, I like to leave the audience with something, I mean, I think you know with Defining Edward, whether you like it or whether you don't like it, you kind of leave it going, hmm, yeah. you know? You're thinking afterwards. Yeah, and I like yeah. that. You know, yeah. I'd, rather, I'd rather have that experience with any kind of a film, mm -hmm. have it linger with me, whether I whether or not it's dislike or like, you know, mm -hmm. or love or hate, mm -hmm. then go, oh, yeah, you know what, that was mm -hmm. okay. Wow. Where do you want to go eat? Or where do you want to go get a beer? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To yeah. me, that's disappointing. And I think to hear that as the filmmaker, right. I'd be like, you know. Right. So with 
three to four or four to five pages or something like that in that range for a story. How did you translate it into a script? Did, did, was the process really time consuming and did you work with John, the author on it? I did, mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was really important. You know, uh, again, it's, he's the originator of the work, mm -hmm. uh, the source material, and I don't think if you're going to, I, I'd never adapted anything before, so I, you know, I, I wanted to be pretty careful about yeah. one, not stepping on anyone's fingers or toes, but also just to stay true to to the meaning of the work, uh -huh. uh, but not literally word by word, or not literally word by word. Um, but I would say perfection is fairly close. That's different, though, right? Yeah, because of the yeah. reason why I mean, There's certainly the some things I have to cut out and omit and uh, just tackle a little bit differently, but it's very close. So I, I would say what you're ready for, this new film, um, I've taken a few more liberties. Uh -huh. um, okay. But I, John has seen both films and is very pleased with them. Oh, uh -huh, that's good. That's good. Uh, and we, he consulted on the first two. Uh -huh. And so the third one, which we're going to try and shoot this winter, uh -huh. um, He's actually been writing the script with me. Oh, which okay. Which is neat. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, he doesn't have the same kind of screenwriting software that I use, but uh, um, I just, I'll send him a draft, or we'll send notes back and forth to each other, and then I'll go, yeah, that's great, and then we've well, had a few phone calls. More for so, collaboration. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, rather than just consultation. You know? uh, it's been, right. It's been great. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it must be thrilling uh, to see something just on paper becoming an image and motion, uh, emotions and everything that is visual, that like you created. Well, interpreted, well, interpreted I think, is a better word, because, mm -hmm. um, like I said, these, I think really, I love to read, and I wish I had more time to do it, but I think really good fiction, you know, it, it paints it all there for you, um, and I think that's the big difference between, you know, fiction and film, is that, or even film in its where you start from, which is a screenplay. Um, mm -hmm. I always refer to writing screenplays as kind of hack writing. <laughs> All the screenplay writers out there will be like, mm. um, but I love to write screenplays. Uh -huh. And I do write some short fiction, or at least I make an attempt to, but I think that's much harder. Um, screenplay writing is very, you know, it all kind of fits in a box. Mm -hmm. And certainly we've read good screenplays and we've mm -hmm. read bad screenplays. Right, right. But Screenplays demand a lot more of the reader. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's a demanding thing to read a screenplay. Whereas a book, if it's a if it's a well written book uh -huh. or a story, right. you just open your eyes and follow the page well, and get words. sucked in. You just mm -hmm. dive right into it and you're taken away. Mm -hmm. They they take you by the hand and lead you. Mm -hmm. uh, reading a screenplay is not right like that. It, it can be work. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's work. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to ask you, I read that you uh you like to draw when you're young, and then that helps. That leads to screen script writing and whatnot. In terms of drawing and whatnot, do you find that uh, in your preparation to make a film, did you have a really well drawn storyboard and kind of like lay everything out? Uh, t tell me more about the preparation process and like uh, your drawing. Where did that come in? There's a reason why I left art school. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was probably a better artist. Um, illustrator um, when I was a child than I am now. I, you know, I think it's because, too, I, it's just the evolution of where you go as an artist, mm -hmm. you know. I, um, I I don't have the time to draw. I uh -huh. do a lot of, when I'm, I end up building a lot of the art, marketing materials, DVD covers, poster images, that kind of thing for uh -huh. all my films because oh. I can't afford to pay anyone mm -hmm. else to do it. Right. And I enjoy it, but... Unfortunately, that's where most of that has gone. I would love to sit down with charcoal and an easel and a big, you know, uh -huh. sheet of paper and just get messy, but I don't have time for that. Um, so I do little thumbnails for all of my, like I'll develop a shot list how I want to shoot it, and, mm -hmm. then, um, and then, yeah, uh, sketch things out. But I always take them to uh, Al Berg, who's a great um, illustrator and artist in town. Does these brilliant storyboards? Oh, okay. Which mm. would put anything that I could put together mm. to shame. Right. So, and also I use Al to help me um, 
sell the package. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I always include his early storyboards oh, okay. when I'm trying to gather money. Right, for the right. Film, yeah, the, the selling of it. But yeah. then when Which you is something I've learned along the way, right? right, right. I think it's not the presentation. Easy. Yeah, it's not easy for everyone to to look and read stuff mm. and look at CVs and go mm. and read a script and say, uh, you know, I kind of get what he wants to do. Mm. If they see storyboards, mm. they get what you want to do. Right, right. Yeah, it, it visualize the thing before you, before you even have a frame shot. Well, and look yeah. how many of these movies nowadays, especially these big um, uh, effects films or mm. action films, and I'm talking big Hollywood blockbusters. Uh, so many of them do this pre-visualization now yeah. in the computer, shot by shot. Mm-hmm. So basically, you've got the entire movie, mm-hmm. you know, in these kind of blocky, semi-pixelated right, people yeah. or like the head and or uh, spaceships or whatever. Right, right. right. And you know, mm-hmm, and yeah. they do the whole movie that way, mm-hmm. and then they go and they actually shoot it. Right, mm-hmm. which is kind of crazy. <laughs> Tell me how, how you come upon uh, the lead for uh, what you're ready for, uh, uh, Michael, Michael Riley. Riley. Yeah, I, I I think if I remember right, I saw him first in uh, This Is Wonderland, uh, the mm-hmm. BBC drama. I really like them. If I that if that's the same Michael that I'm thinking of. It is, and. It's a really Michael, quirky character. I mean, he is, is a wonderful. wonderful and incredibly interesting actor, and I've always thought that. Um, and I was actually flabbergasted that he wanted to be involved with the film. Um, with Perfection, the first film for Bravo, the first in the trilogy, yeah. um, both uh, Susan Bristow, who you yeah. know, um, who co-produced the film with me, mm-hmm. She kind of pitched the story and said, you know what, I think this is perfect. And I read it and I went, it is perfect. And, and she said, and who do you think of for the guy, for the lead? And I thought, Joel, who mm-hmm. is a friend of mine, who is also the lead in my feature. Yeah, Edward. Edward. yeah. I thought, he's perfect for this. Uh-huh. So that was kind of a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. Um, the one comment that Bravo had to me, which I think is interesting and maybe will be interesting to your, your audience, is that Bravo said, we like what you did. We'd like you to do more. Um, but do you have any stars that you can put in? Mm. <laughs> and I thought, you know, <laughs> one, stars cost money. Yeah, right, budget. <laughs> uh, and I don't know, I just, I think, you know, this isn't a feature, it's not a television pilot, mm. it's, it's a short film, and I, I think it's great to have recognizable names, and uh-huh. more importantly, I think it's important to have quality actors, and not anything against Joel or Jillian or any of the other people that were involved in Perfection or Defining Edward or anything like that, but, um, I think, okay, you know, what, how am I going to do this? <laughs> uh, I guess I understand. It's easier easier for them to market if there's something that the general audience can recommend. So if that's uh, Michael Riley, then great. Right, right. Uh, and I have to give full credit to uh, a casting agent in town who's also a friend of mine, uh, Carmen Kodik. Uh, she cast some great projects recently, like um, The Englishman's Boy adaptation of the CBC miniseries, which mm-hmm. is coming out. I don't know if it's this fall or in the spring, but um, and just a ton of other stuff. She's doing. A, uh, I know. Do you know Grant Harvey? She's doing Captain Grant Harvey's new film right now. It's I think shooting in Edmonton. Anyway, and she did Tommy Douglas story. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I go to Carmen, and uh, my co-producer introduced this team. Um, introduced me to Carmen, and she said she was wonderful. And she said, "Who do you want?" And I'd never worked with a casting agent before. Oh. I'd never had that luxury. Uh, Defining well, Edward, I did all the casting <laughs> myself yeah. with Sue, mm-hmm. um, which is painstaking. Yeah, yeah it is. Very time to agonizing. Yeah, yeah. To find the right people. Because as a director, you know, you you have in your mind who you want, mm-hmm. and if you never find them, right, then you're always compromised. Uh, yeah. And I don't want to. Don't get me into a discussion about that's what independent film is. The compromise. That's a whole another chapter. Yeah. In our interview. <laughs> we don't have hours. No. Um, anyway, Carmen said, who do you want? Uh, who do you want for what you're ready for? Who do you want for these parts? And the Dr. Laird part that Michael plays is, I mean, it's written by John, obviously, most of his mm-hmm. dialogue, but it's, and I said, well, what about Michael Riley? She goes, just dream big. Who would you want? I said, Michael Riley. She goes, oh. well, I know his agent. I'll send him the script. Mm-hmm. That's how it happened. Wow. But a week later, I got a call, and Carmen said, Michael's interested. Mm-hmm. What do you need? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> so I clapped, uh-huh. and giggled, and ran around mm-hmm. the house a couple of times, and uh-huh. I was like, perfect. Uh-huh. And he was wonderful. He was, mm-hmm. And Stephen as well. Yeah. Did you guys shoot it here in Calgary, or did you shoot it in Toronto, or like uh, 
with uh, Michael was in LA at the time, right. so we flew him. We shot in Calgary. Calgary. Mm -hmm. um, and Stephen, who plays the the narrator, mm -hmm. um, is based in Vancouver. Uh -huh. So we flew everyone in and mm -hmm. shot it here over mm -hmm. a weekend, a couple of days, and uh, and of course we were dealing with the strike, the actor strike at that time. Oh, really? At the beginning of the year. Uh -huh. So we ended up pushing, I think, a week or two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, but it all worked out fine. Mm -hmm. So, so two, sh shot over two days. Two days. And the financing was okay. The December twenty sixth, uh, two thousand and six. Right, uh, I, I saw it in your blog. Mm. Is it t December? Yeah, through Bravo. It was. Bravo. Mm -hmm. uh, Bravo was earlier, and then Alberta Foundation for the Arts came in. Both that's who is, have financed the, mm -hmm. the two these two first two films. Right. So I'm hoping they're all going to jump on board again for this last one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And we. Shot you said in uh, January this year. Um, what you're ready oh, for was shot in I think the first weekend in March. Oh, first weekend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we delivered um, about the third week of April. Mm -hmm. So we shot Super 16 and finished HD. Oh, okay. Perfection. The moment we shot Super 16 and finished Standard Down. Mm -hmm. um, so like Super 16. You like I like film. Film. Mm -hmm. And now I've shot digital too. Mm -hmm. you know, Finding Edward was, was mm -hmm. HD on mm -hmm. the Sony 900 way back when. Mm -hmm. and it was a new camera. But um, and I've shot on this, as you know, the little Panasonic uh, yeah, HDX yeah. 200, which I like. I like. It's a nice it's image. The P2 system, right? You know what? It, they're all just tools, right? Right. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And, and, and at the end of the day, they are tools. <laughs> yeah. Does it get? If the you're going to build you a birdhouse, mm -hmm. you use different tools you than if you're going to build. It. A mansion uh -huh. for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, they're just tools. It just depends mm -hmm. on what you know. I, I'm not against digital. I'm not film is dead. I don't uh -huh. no. uh -huh. As, you know. So you I don't love have that vibe. the texture of film. Mm -hmm. And HD is nice, but it still can't quite get the really deep blacks, and uh -huh. it can't have you know. Uh -huh. it's, you still gotta right, right. <laughs> and I've you know I've worked as a technician on sets too with shooting digital video shooting mm -hmm. HD and it you can just see it you know it's mm -hmm. a slightly different process and uh, to me the image is it can be beautiful mm -hmm. if you light it properly mm -hmm. it's just not the same right so I want to go back to the the trilogy mm -hmm. thing so how did that how did you pick the three to make it a group are they like uh, as grouped by the author already or you no. just somehow the three stories it stood out out of the 55 stories and then you think and link them together in, 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 in this way. You know, I think uh, I just did Perfection and I did Perfection partly because, you know, I'd finished Defining Edward and it had kind of gone out to the world and did a couple little things and got me some press and said, okay, here's a guy who used to be a technician and now mm -hmm. directing. And, but it didn't, exp like I didn't, I wasn't in L.A. I didn't move to L.A. and start mm -hmm. doing music videos for the Foo Fighters or, you know what I mean? Like, right, right, oh yeah. And I not know that I expected exactly that. what you mean. Yeah. Not that I expected that. Mm -hmm. um, but what I was really itching to do was direct. I knew how much I loved doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and how much I loved just the collaborative art of filmmaking, but also working with actors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just building things. Mm -hmm. I've always loved to build stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that's... Mm -hmm. Building a movie is, uh, you know, if you ever get the opportunity to make a film, mm -hmm. you should do that. If you have any interest in doing it, mm -hmm. do it, and you'll mm -hmm. find out. I'll hate it, I'll love it, mm -hmm. I can do it, right. I can't do it, mm -hmm. whatever. But yeah. um, You can only find out by doing it, Yeah, sitting there watching. But great, that's like but everything. Yeah, you have that's to like do everything. It. You can only find out by doing right. it. Right. Um, with so the with story. perfection, I yeah, did yeah. it because I was, I think I was whining to Sue. Mm -hmm. I was whining to Susan saying, I really want to direct again, and mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm the only one who's creating opportunities for myself right now. She said, "Here's this book. What about this story?" So, I think after it finished, and Judy had seen it, Judy Gladstone at Bravo had seen it, and uh -huh. it kind of was well received, and um, and then I pitched it to her. I said, "Well, what about two more?" Oh. And then I kind of went, "Oh, <laughs> I got to come up with another two. You got yourself into something. But you know, 54 more stories. I mean, I had some options. Mm -hmm. And certainly by that time, I had read the book a couple times uh -huh. and knew I had my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, some of them were more easily adaptable mm -hmm. to film. Mm -hmm. um, and anyway, Sue got busy and couldn't do what you're ready for with me, which is why, partially why I brought Tinu Sinha on, um, who was great, who was wonderful. 
but um, she, I don't think she was initially all that excited about what you're ready for. Mm-hmm. Anyway, because I talked to her in the early stages, she went, well, what's the point of this one? Mm-hmm. You know, and it is, it is kind of a little bit darker, it is kind oh, of a little bit, oh. <laughs> you know, which is, Get not that I don't love it. perfection, uh-huh. um, but it, yeah. you know, that's what I like, that's a little bit more my style, a little mm-hmm. something that leaves you, yeah, yeah. you know, uncomfortable at the mm-hmm. end. Um, and, and again, just the performances, you know, both Michael and Steven really brought it to life. So, uh, I think I probably, there was probably six stories that I could have picked from, mm-hmm. or right. more. Right. But, um, and, and then I, I think the last one that I've got planned, which is uh, called In Translation, mm-hmm. that could have been the second one, mm-hmm. but it, it, it is, I think this is a natural kind of a, to bring everything full circle, mm-hmm. because perfection it has its dark moments but it's also very funny it's very and they're all yeah. very slice of life right mm-hmm. very these little tiny moments of kind mm-hmm. of extreme emotion and how we react to mm-hmm. situations and, and I think this one is, it just rounds it off very nicely because mm-hmm. and I'm not sure I would want to leave it at mm-hmm. what you're ready for it's a little dark oh okay <laughs> little, all right <laughs> I mean, it's a little too unsettling mm-hmm. a little too uncomfortable right. and I think in translation is is more of a positive note uh-huh. You know, because I like to believe I'm a positive person. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. right? Okay. So at the end of the day, you want that experience. You want to scope with the three stories. Uh, for I us. think so. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, again, I think uh, I think John's book is positive. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's there's some moments that scare us because I think they remind us of ourselves mm-hmm. and and some of the choices that we make and but. Overall, it's an it's an enjoyable read because it's positive. It makes mm-hmm. us feel good about being flawed and about making mistakes and you know your life not all coming through a horrible end because you make one mistake or whatever. It's just it's yeah. I don't know. I think once you read the book, you know. Okay. And hopefully, hopefully, when the trilogy has come has finished and come full circle, I'll have done that- it justice. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool, Corey. Thanks a lot. I'm going to ask you some technical question, uh, but I have to uh, start another.